Hey guys, it's Robbie Puzz. Um, today we're going to be talking about how to fund your first comic book project on Kickstarter. Uh, if you are an experienced um, comic book creator who's done larger scale projects, this video is probably not for you, but feel free to watch and give any advice uh, if you have been through the motions. Um, I've had a couple books that I've done in my past that while they weren't um, these, you know, industry changing uh, creations, it was enough to get a couple floppies out the door. And if you're like me, you're probably thinking like, hey, I want to do, I, I want, I have a comic book, like an issue of a book I want to create. How do I do that? Um, so I just wanted to share some of my advice that I learned in going through that process. Um, so if you're a young or aspiring creator, this is the place for you. Real quick, thank you for watching my recent video if you did about pitching to Image Comics. Really good basic lessons in there for how to create your first comic book pitch and you know, which the basic elements of that are doing five to six pages of functional completed artwork that has um, lettering and is inked, uh, creating, you know, the synopsis and the like formal pitch of your book. Check out the link in the description of this video if you want to learn how to do that. You know, realistically, if you are just starting out, you're probably not going to go straight to Image Comics for your very first comic book project. And Kickstarter is more likely the avenue for you. It's a really great crowdfunding platform um, that allows really like it's not just a place to get like investment back on your book but but Kickstarter really operates as sort of this like launching pad for a lot of people who have an idea and want to bring it to life and I just think it's a really good thing that you should try out once in a while because there's a lot to be learned from it. And again, like it's <clears throat> just a really good proof of just proof of concept, if you will, of like here, I created something. Uh, here it is. It has these backers. Like it's a real crowdfunded, kickstarted project, right? If for some reason you're not already familiar, Kickstarter is a crowdfunding platform where you can host your project, the idea you have. Uh, people can go to your page and while you're running the campaign of funding, you know, the funding period for your project, um, people can contribute. There's different layers, like different tiers of how much people are willing to contribute. And for that, they, you know, receive different rewards or incentives uh, for their financial contribution. Um, it's really cool, really engaging. And Kickstarter has really given a lot of power to the people, right? It's just the place where anyone can go like you don't need permission from a larger publisher to go and do your book you can do your book and you can do it that like on kickstarter and i think the industry is actually trending towards a lot of releases that are like this anyway i've seen a lot of books even by like existing authors that are being launched through this um I'll, more more on that and maybe another video but i really do think that like the the sort of engagement and just like the enthusiasm around a kickstarter launch has proven very successful and very lucrative um, to people who are doing creative media so all of that out of the way there's a lot that i could say about kickstarting a comic book project and I'm going to try and keep this scaled back to just if you are doing your first comic book project on Kickstarter. So I have three tips for that. My first piece of advice is to start small. Um, if this is your first comic book project on Kickstarter, 10 years ago now, I had, you know, done a book that was six issues 132 pages like a very standard trade paperback kind of story that could be collected in a volume and um i tried to kickstart that project i didn't really have much like i had my initial pitch which again if you watch my other video so i had the few pages of artwork um i think we actually did go and do the whole first issue on my own like investment 
in that process, you know, I tried to fund the entire book right off the bat and probably did like, you know, a $10,000 goal, which was pretty lofty for someone who was like fresh out of college and who had no, you know, history, like proven track record of doing this. And so understandably, I didn't meet my goal. And so what I decided to do was I went back to the drawing board um, I did start on like a different project just because I had, you know, like a, a different passion project I wanted to move on to. But when the, when the time came for me to do a new project, again, I started small. And so in, like I kind of reverse engineered like, OK, how far did I get in that campaign? Well, I knew how much money I was able to generate with, in the all or nothing platform, which was like thirteen or fifteen hundred dollars between thirty five people. So for someone who's not pretty good at math, I was like, okay, that was the cost of money that it was to do one issue. That sounds reasonable. So when I went to put the comic out in the world, I was just crowdfunding for the first issue of the book. This allowed me to focus on, you know, a more realistic goal um, working within my means of like what I knew I could achieve, like the people who were interested in it. And again, it just like brings all the costs down. Um, so that's, that's really my, my big advice is always like start small. Don't go for your big idea on day one, because like inevitably you're going to have some kind of learning curve or a mistake like some issue you're going to learn from if your ultimate goal is to have like a six issue trade do it issue by issue especially if you're just starting out like take the steps to get there because at the end of it if you watched my other video you will have all six issues and then you can bind them up into the trade paperback and fund for that or better yet pitch it to publishers because like you've proven like hey here's the time and steps i took to get here i have the completed trade it's ready for retail and you know that's like that's where you just take the steps to get to the top of the stairs my secondary piece of advice would be be as close to the finish line as possible when you're doing a kickstarter project um despite the name like kickstart like it's not like kickstarter is not the place to go to necessarily to begin your journey um like it's not start up, right? And so if you're like, oh, I'm, you know, here's my idea for a story and uh, it's going to be pretty good and it's going to be like 500 pages and I'm going to get it done. I just need the money. <laughs> like that's not a very enthusiastic, fun and engaging thing. And there's probably plenty of, you know, creators on the platform who, or people who have contributed, who've like never seen results. And Kickstarter can be a little notorious for that, where things like come out and are disappointing or took like way too long. I've, I've had projects where I funded, and I've been like, where is this thing? I'm still waiting for it. Right. <clears throat> so if you're making a book, my advice is to always do as much as you can on your own investment. Like if, if you have an artist who's willing to, you know, or you are an artist, but like if you guys are willing to start or if you can like spare the money to just pay the artist and try and get your um, your investment back, that's great. Be as far along in the journey. Like I would personally say be, you know, you should probably have the artwork done and have gotten proofs and just be like, here's, you know, we just need the money to actually do this now. It's always better to start closer to the end because you know, you've worked out all the issues, it's not going to be delayed. And really, like, when you are doing the campaign, it's going to seem actionable, you're not going to keep people waiting, you know, even worse, like you, you don't want to just not follow through on the financial contributions people gave you. So that's my advice is like, just be as far along in the process as you can. So what it's really happening is like this low risk thing, hey, we made this, it's ready to go and we're going to take 30 days to get the money and then maybe like another 30 days to go to print and like the turnaround is quick. Great, great method to follow. And so when you're doing the campaign, most campaigns are typically about 30 days. I wouldn't really recommend it being longer because like a month, like people could lose interest. And if, and also most Kickstarter campaigns usually fund like 
typically in the first few days if they're going to make it. Um, if you don't meet your goal like pretty pretty early on, it's not like you don't have a chance of getting there. Like most most um, most campaigns that get like over fifty five percent of the way are going to you know they're going to get over the hill and go down and get the rest of their goal. But like you'll see that more often now that like it'll say things like funded in 72 hours. Like mine, mine were usually funded like within a week. Um, and you can certainly take steps to like prep your fan base to be ready to contribute instead of just like launching it on day one and being like, you know, you, you could take steps to make that launch a little quicker at the beginning. When you are in the launch campaign and you're, you know, you've officially released your Kickstarter and you're taking contributions. My big advice is to like go and ask for help. <laughs> um, especially if you're just starting out, um, you don't have to necessarily tell people like, Hey, I need your money, <clears throat> but social media, organic posts on social media really only go so far. And you know, you're kind of just putting the call out into the wind and hoping that people will uh, get there. What you should do is like very genuinely go to the people that you know and think will care about the book and ask them, hey, like not even just will you contribute to my book, but like I am doing this project. Um, it really means a lot to me. I'd love for you to check it out. Um, you're under no obligation to give money towards my project, but if you could take a minute to look at it, if you could share it on your social media, uh, it would go a long way to help me if you could say some nice words. And most people will get the idea that like, yeah, I'm going to contribute to the book. Um, but really like that step of just showing like your friends and family are valued and it means a lot to you um, and letting them know just the pitfalls of social media that like, <laughs> Uh, engagement is like the biggest factor for something to actually get recognized that should help you get most of your way to your goal <clears throat> I've done a couple of small 22 page floppies using this method on Kickstarter because again <clears throat> from my failed experience I learned like well I have 35 40 50 people who care enough to give me a couple dollars towards my goal and will contribute, <clears throat> I can rely on that. And even if that's called a core audience, folks, and if that's enough, um, that's enough, right? If that's enough people, if 50 people or 30 people or 20 people is enough to get one issue of this done, it's enough to get six done. And then if you have six issues, you can have a pitchable, like publishable trade paperback where, uh, you know, ready for retail, as I said earlier. So those are just my basic steps. I'm going to go ahead and call, call out really quickly that Kickstarter has some great first party material, like tons of first party material you should be checking out. Um, I literally just like searched for comics on their website. I'm looking to run a comics project. They have the creator handbook. They actually have this PDF, how to, to kickstart a comics project. And I'll go through it real quick. Um, you know, it, it more or less covers the same things that I've addressed here. Okay, don't stifle your creativity. You can create a community on Kickstarter. You know, fantasy. Let's, you know, what um, you can create a community on Kickstarter, fantasy comics, anthology books, sports, LGBT, lots of lots of different niches and communities that you could start to develop on Kickstarter, which is definitely outside the scope of what I wanted to talk to here today about building community, but really, really a powerful platform that you could be, you know, over time developing your presence on and not for nothing, but the, um, my advice to break this up, break your project up into smaller pieces will be the kind of thing that you can have like a regular cadence and a regular appearance on Kickstarter. So like just the odds of you being visible on the platform and making new things is just greatly increased by the fact that you broke this up into bite-sized pieces, right? So instead of doing your big project that could take the better part of six months to a year, if you're lucky to complete, 
just do it regularly. Like if you're on social media, you're probably noticing your favorite creators are posting every day. They're actually posting three stories a day and one newsfeed post a day because that's the algorithm, right? So if you're doing projects every month or every other month on Kickstarter that are small, achievable projects, um, you're just really increasing your odds of getting somewhere. Anyway, tangent over. Uh, tell your story. Who are you? What are you creating? Where did this idea for the project come from? All of this is like in the customary layout of creating a campaign. Like they have all the fields that you have to populate, which this video isn't really about. Why is it important to you? Are you working with a team? Tell, tell the story of your collaborators, right? I'm working with an artist right now who, um, you know, I found who just simply by looking for someone who drew the things I was looking for. Like if you're looking for dragons, like go on Instagram and search comics art or comic art dragons or dragon illustration or something and like find someone who meets your style, right? And then like, and then you have the story to tell about like how you guys became friends and like, you know, those are the things that like make it a little more human that will give outsiders a reason to invest in your story. Um, don't forget the visual aspects when building your project page on Kickstarter or pictures worth a thousand years. <laughs> if you're doing a comic book, you should have tons of artwork to show off and, you know, have a compelling story. Like, again, I could go on Kickstarter today with a rough idea of like, here's a book I would love to do if I had the money. But what's even better is if you've done some of the work and can show people these visually striking, beautiful things like convey, convey you know, the idea and the tone and the story you're going for. So they can see it and want to participate in it. Um, plan your rewards. Uh, you know, for most people, it's probably just the the floppy comic book. But you could also do note cards. You can do um, pins. You can do uh, posters or prints. The original artwork, if it's done by hand and not digitally, there's a lot of stuff you can kind of like auction off that way. Um, what, yeah, behind the scenes content, plan your promotion. So tons of great information here. Um, again, a little bit outside of the scope of like my basic information of what I wanted to discuss today. But I'd really recommend if you're serious about doing a comic book project um, on Kickstarter and just going forward, there's tons of research material here you should be checking out. Um, that's really... The basic advice I have for today, you guys, um, I would I would like to do some more deep dives about perhaps like creating a campaign and, you know, all of the best practices, what really to expect. And I think there's a lot more to be said about that can, than can possibly even be done in one video. Um, so if you're looking for more information on any of this, please let me know what would be valuable to you. If you found this or the other video helpful subscribe to the channel. I'm looking for reasons to keep doing this um, while I'm doing my own project. Uh, it's fun for me. And so, yeah, I appreciate your time today. Um, again, if you got a question, leave it in the chat. I'll be happy to answer it to the best of my ability, or maybe someone here who knows more than me will be also watching. But um, yeah, that's all I have to say for today. Again, the, the three pieces of advice for making your first comic book project on Kickstarter. Start small, be as close to the finish line as possible, and don't forget to ask for help. Thank you, and take care.